He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. Spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Kid pockets a memento from a breaker, once the fastest man in the land. is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they're aiming for the kid. Wasn't long before the kid could loose an arrow, strong and true. up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. He's a mighty fast learner. Find the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid'll feel like a new man. Arsenals where the kid can pick the best tools for the job.
some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. Kid good manners. He never used them though. An old ferry barge sends the kid on his way. Real close now. Chunk of alloy. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. The kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did.
finds the core to the Wharf District. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Kid has a feeling you better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest, enough to point the way to the cores. Tell him is to set that core is on the monument there, then watch. Kid ain't finished here yet. Just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the bastion can send them even farther into the wild unknown.
you don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant lands. The Breaker Barracks. Many straight shooters learn their way here. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. <laughs> Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. <laughs> Kid ain't ever seen an elephant squirt before. Scumbag can digest just about anything. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. Say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tame. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful in a pinch. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Squirts just don't know when to quit. He heads for the east side where windbags used to keep the local forge. They ain't pleased. No coal or alloy left to pay him for their efforts. Percy the Snitch. Never much cared for that big wide grin of his. Kid ain't about to pass out in the middle of the workman war.
Inside the forge, Key can fine tune those instruments of his. Kid's lifelong friends looking fit to keep on fighting. With a good length of meese gut, that bow's like new again. Core ain't here neither, so he's gotta guess again. for the foreman used to live, tending to his flock. Gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. And there it is, but it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. Blustery old foreman is keeping his fellas in check, almost like he's showboating for the crowd. There's a new marshal in town. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to fall. Might as well check the other side streets before leaving this hole. for the biggest dump in town, Scumbag Alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. disposition. They always 
they said old Gersel wouldn't go without a fight. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out's right where he started. The rest of the path is gone for good, and his city crest won't bring it back. comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack, the monuments calling for it. The windbags used to be all right, then the calamity took the floor out from under him. Ain't always much to say. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Traces of other cores while the kid was out. The workmen ward. Them windbags used to keep the city humming along here. Breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's focused. He's armed. And he's off. Shot just happens in a flash.
kid ain't had enough of the breaker's barracks. Takes practice, and a mighty strong bow helps too. He returns with some of the materials we need. Sometimes a single look says it all.
In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on a squirt. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit. As it turns out, the cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All Kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Not every squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. Scumbags don't take kindly to into the others. Fellas, take his corner. Birdie pop that mean old foreman. At this rate, maybe five more minutes, maybe thirty. Hard to tell. Words get real territorial around the core. Then a shipment of free samples shows up. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy.
troublesome scene, to be sure. I still remember the look on his face after that one. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Takes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Hearty oh, punch is so zesty, it'll let you carry on through the worst of times. a special surprise in every one of those arrows. The little Zolwood oil and that blade shines like a light. Nothing more healthful. Ah! 
slippery little devils. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Still others use the place to test their finest blades. The place gets awful slick sometimes. Cuts all of them down soon enough. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe.
couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Quick and careful is the only way to go. But then... Somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. So could a reckless kid, for that matter. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Security is all fired up. See, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Not so much for noise and tomfoolery. Sky bridges link the path together. One of their bridges whips the kid along. Finds a spyglass, like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. But calamity changed everything even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is, who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid, that core ain't coming back. They used to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find them. He's wise to toss those things plenty far away. Even gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. <laughs> We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we build.
the hanging gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. The kid sees a plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. There was someone like him. It sees him there agape, in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the Bird Boy didn't make it. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? survive as well. Kid does what he has to do, and then...
What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home too, far to the east. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. All it takes is some fragments and the bastion makes it good as new. Track down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. There's Pith Orchard, built in honor of the bull, and folks like Zolf who pray to him. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. <laughs> Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard Core is long gone too. stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. 
couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Piff lights up like a rodeo. Kid breaks into bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off? Piv. Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Piff put a scare in him. The gods ain't gonna catch you if you fall. Sacrifice himself for the likes of Pith. Kid passes Pith's trial, and he's richer for it. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Kid ain't found a core, but least he found Zolf's precious shrine. <laughs> now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. War machetes are so quick, you gotta keep a good grip on them.
Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. Cinderbrick Fort, where the marshals used to watch over the city. There's only one way into Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the fort's crawling with windbags. tail up from down after a while. At least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through their greasy hides.
Windbags can't use the martial supplies, but the kids sure can. As for the windbags, Cinderbrick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. Got a squirt lure at the ready in case things turn sour. Security's playing gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. Trap the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. <laughs> then they bring out Glutus and Glandon. All their scumbag uncles. The uncles go out with a whimper. They got something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose.
kid takes down Glutus, maybe it was Blandon. The windbags finally get the message. Kid used to dream of getting a marshal's badge, but not like this. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the Calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever.